The housing market just flipped again as mortgage demand soars 28% as interest rates decline on a bunch of downbeat data. We receive bad news on the PPI. We receive bad news on retail sales. The Fed's beige book has come out and said that businesses should expect weak growth in months ahead at a time when the markets are fully pricing in another rate hike. So should we expect this trend to continue? Should we expect interest rates to continue to fall? Or is there a chance that we'll see inflation spike and the Fed have to get more aggressive on their rate hikes. Well, in today's video, we're gonna talk about expectations with regards to inflation, with regards to the Fed, and what their plan of attack is, along with what you can expect in the housing market over the next couple of months. Existing home sales just fell for the 11th consecutive month, hitting the lowest level we've seen since November of 2010. And we all know the primary reason for this is the increase in interest rates, along with the massive appreciation that we saw in many housing markets out there putting a strain on housing affordability. And the biggest demographic getting hit by this housing affordability strain is first time home buyers, making up just 31% of the sales compared to historical number of nearly 40%. At the same time, you're seeing cash sales rise to nearly 28% from just 23% a year ago, making it more and more difficult out there for first time home buyers to compete in this crazy housing market. So first time home buyers are already finding it very difficult to compete. And Lauren Chun, the chief economist economist for the National Association of Realtors just released a statement saying that he expects home sales to pick up again soon as interest rates have declined after peaking last year. So he's come out and made a statement basically saying that we've seen the peak in interest rates. And this is something I firmly believe as well. I've mentioned it in several videos. I think the peak that we saw over 7% was actually the top in the market with regards to rates. And since then, we've seen interest rates pull back to nearly 6% for well-qualified buyers out there, which is the lowest lowest level we've seen in four months. So the question for many home buyers out there is will this trend continue? And before we actually dive into that data, I wanna take a minute here and ask a favor. If you find any value in these videos at all, do me a favor and hit the thumbs up. It really helps the video, it helps the algorithm, and helps me accomplish my goal of getting in front of more people and providing education. And if you feel inclined, do me a favor and also hit that subscribe button. So as you've heard me say in many videos and provide charts to support it, interest rates tend to follow inflation. And as we saw with the latest inflation numbers that came out just a week ago, inflation has moderated to 6.5% on the headline number and 5.7% on the core figure. And while these numbers are still well above the Fed's target, if we look at this chart here and we annualize the last six months, we're sitting at 1.8% inflation. Now I'm not going out on a limb here and saying that we're going to see the exact same numbers in the following six months, but if we did, we would be sitting under the Fed's target of 2% by the end of June. And as we've discussed before, we know that's one of the Fed's measures of how aggressively they will hike when it comes to the Fed funds rate. They look at inflation and they look at employment. And while inflation is moderating, jobless claims have once again unexpectedly fallen to 190,000 claims at a time when economists had forecasted nearly 214,000 claims. So while inflation is moderating, the job market is continuing to stay strong. And the primary reason for that is because during the pandemic years, a lot of people left the workforce and they left it permanently. A lot of the baby boomers that were close to retirement said, forget this, I'm not coming back. And that left a lot of job openings out there. And so while a lot of these major companies like Apple, Amazon, and Google are laying off employees, the jobless claim numbers are actually going down, which is giving the Fed full authority to continue along with their plan of raising the Fed funds rate above 5%. In fact, at the moment, the market is pricing nearly a 96% chance that the Fed hikes the Fed funds rate by another quarter percent on February 1st. And while there are people out there like Ron and Sana saying that inflation is over and Krugman saying the Fed's view of inflation feels a bit desperate, the Fed's George is saying it's too soon to say that inflation is over. Along with the Fed's Brainerd sees high rates ahead even with progress on inflation. In fact, Brainerd insisted that the Fed won't waver in its commitment to taming prices that have come down some in recent months, but remain near four decade highs. Even with the recent moderation, inflation remains high and policy will need to be sufficiently restrictive for some time to make sure inflation returns to 2% on a sustained basis. So if inflation moderates, but the Fed continues to keep their stance on not necessarily hiking rates, but keeping rates high, what will that do for interest rates? What will that do for the housing market? Well, if interest rates follow inflation and inflation goes down, 
down, then there's a really good chance that you see interest rates decline over the next couple of months. In fact, many out there are predicting May 10th to be a huge day in the market. Why? Well, let's take a minute here and look at this chart. So if we focus on the bottom end of this chart, you can see that the January CPI numbers actually get released on February 14th. At that time, it's a high replacement on overall core, but a low replacement on shelter, which means it may be hard to see any meaningful movement when it comes to inflation. So inflation may not moderate nearly as much as we've seen over the last couple of months. And the February CPI numbers get released on March 14th, whereas we see high replacements on both core and shelter, which means that you should see inflation drop in a meaningful way. And then the March numbers get released on April 12th, and this is a low replacement on core, but a high replacement on shelter. And again, you're not going to see any meaningful movement moves in inflation, but the golden day of May 10th. That's when the April figures get released, and that's a time when you have high replacement on both core and shelter, and this should continue for the entire quarter. And Barry Habib, who's more or less the godfather of interest rates, is predicting that this is a day that you should start to see a big improvement in interest rates. So the question is, will this push house prices up? Will the housing market start to fire again? What is it going to look like if interest rates come back down? Well, we started the video by talking about mortgage demand soaring 28% because interest rates had come down a little bit. And I believe that as we move into the spring, we start to see a little bit more inventory on the market, which is naturally going to happen because of the time of the year. I think you're going to start to see a pickup in the housing market. 2023 is going to be known as a year for a lot less home sales. And the primary reason for that, because you're not likely to see a major adjustment in overall housing affordability. Affordability. While interest rates are going to come down a little bit, house prices are going to continue to move sideways, but because many sellers out there have locked in super low interest rates, have equity in their homes, they're not likely to move, and so you're not likely to have a lot of transactions taking place. And while there are economists out there predicting that homes will continue to decline by at least another percent, at a time when we're already seeing luxury home sales see the biggest decline ever, and the primary reason for that is the people typically buying luxury homes have a lot of money invested in the stock market. And as you're fully aware, where the stock market has gone down considerably over the last six months or so, which has likely caused luxury home buyers to take a step back before making any huge purchases in the market. And so while builder sentiment has risen due to lower rates, I don't think you're going to see builders out there building a bunch of new homes. They're likely going to finish what's already on the books, which means that long-term inventory is going to continue to be a problem. So I expect 2023 to kind of be a blah year for real estate. Not a lot of transactions taking place, not a big crash in the market, not a big appreciation when it comes to home prices. Home prices more or less moving sideways, and that could happen for the next couple of years unless we see a major adjustment with regards to interest rates. So just make sure if you're buying a home, you're looking at the full picture. Is your job recession proof? Do you have money in the bank? Can you afford the payment? And the most important thing and something I say often is you have to have a longer term time horizon. You need to be thinking more than five years. I would even say more than seven years at this point. Again, not because I believe a housing crash is coming, but historically speaking, real estate state is a long-term game. And a lot of people at the moment are confused because they saw home prices appreciate so much over a short period of time, that's become the new norm in their head. When in fact, that's not normal at all. In many markets out there across the United States, it would have taken 20 years to see the appreciation that we saw in a two year period. But if you are a home buyer looking to take advantage of the 2023 market with housing prices down a little bit, but not sure where to start, well, I have something for you. I created a first time home buyer course to guide you through that process. Whether you're looking at buying a house in 2023 to not only empower, educate, and guide you through the process, but make you an educated home buyer. So if you're interested, do me a favor and check the link below. But if you want to know my forecast on 2023, where I see home prices going, where I see home sales going, and where I see interest rates going, do me a favor and check out this video here.